right, we are back with another bit edition of Beyond Baseball Shorts, powered by Prospects Live. As always, I'm your host, Jared Perkins, and we have a very special guest, uh, RJ Davovich, right-handed pitcher with the San Francisco Giants. RJ, how are you doing today? Not too bad. How are you doing? Good, good. We really appreciate you taking some time to join. Um, so for, for all the viewers, this is the first question I always like to kick off with. Um, for the viewers who just don't know you, uh, give them a little bit of background of your story, how you got to where you are, uh, your journey through baseball, some of the things you love to do outside of the game. Yeah, I mean, I'm from Provo, Colorado, a uh, small southern town. Uh, played baseball since I was about 10 years old. Uh, ended up going to Central Arizona Junior College out of high school and then transferred to Arizona State and played there for two years. And then, uh, you know, now we're here. Um, outside of baseball, I love, love the golf. I uh, love to cook um, and hang out with my dog. He's right here. And, yeah. Nice. About love it. it. <laughs> But, uh, I'm a Sun Devil as well, so I gotta give you okay, props you for going go. to ASU. Uh, what was your favorite experience at Arizona State? I mean, I, just the guys in general. Honestly, yeah. I mean, there's so many good memories with them, um, and the bonds you kind of create with with with, with your teammates. I, that's what I remember more than anything else. Yeah, you know, a bunch of fun times there, just hanging out with everyone. Yeah. Do you have a favorite restaurant in Tempe? Yeah, it's actually called June Sushi. Okay. It, uh, nice. Actually, we went the other day with Tor- uh, with Torkelson and a few other guys, but uh, it's just an all-you-can-eat sushi buffet, and it opened up our uh, sophomore sophomore winter, and we ended up going there. So we have been there so many times, but yeah, I love yeah. that place. That's awesome. You talked about how you went to the Central Arizona, and we all know that Juco is kind of a grind for most yeah, guys. Definitely. Um, everybody gets there and it's a great experience. Like I, I, a lot of times when we talk to high school kids uh, and my other job with major league university, we're like, Mm -hmm. always think about the Juco route. It's not a bad route. Um, do you have any like horror stories or like awesome stories from the Juco days? I mean, probably some I shouldn't say on a podcast, but, uh, (laughs) I mean, you kind of the same thing as I want to say the, the, the time you spend with those guys there, like in, in Coolidge, Arizona, that's all there is. It's only the campus. So, like, the amount of time you spend, like, I mean, some of those guys I haven't talked to in two or three years, but if they ever hit me up, it, it, it'd be, like, just running it back, like, old times. Yeah. Um, but I just, I mean, the practices, day in and day out, and two-a-days, I mean, in the moment, they suck, but looking back, it was it was so much fun. That was probably some of the most fun I've ever had playing baseball and is just being down there with the guys in that environment. Yeah, and you think when you make that transition from high school to that JUCO level too, you're trying to figure out how to be an adult, let alone exactly. just like go to college. Yeah, I mean JUCO is probably the best spot because you're gonna get playing time, you're gonna have an opportunity to be in like a small community. Definitely, yeah. That's what I. Anyone who ever talks to me, I always if if they're on the fence between JUCO and going to a Division two or Division one, if they don't have feel like they have a good fit, I'll be a hundred percent advocate for going to junior college. Route. I mean, it was the best thing for me. And I think it was the best thing for a lot of guys who went down there with me. Like you said, you just get immediate playing time. Yeah. And you just kind of get you just you just get a chance to actually prove yourself and actually see where you stack up against that. And you still have a chance to get drafted too, which is yeah, which is a huge upset that a lot of people don't know about. But I mean, I love the junior college route. I think it I think it it's definitely not for everyone, but the people it is for, it helps them in the end more than anything else. Yeah. And like that's the beautiful thing about baseball. Like you can go different routes yeah, no matter exactly. what, and you yeah. can make it to the major leagues. That's the best thing. Exactly. Um, talk about like, – so you spent a lot of time in Arizona, and you also had the opportunity to experience the Arizona Fall League. Uh, mm-hmm. Just for the viewers who don't know the Arizona Fall League, take us into that and what that experience is like, being around all these top prospects and just kind of being able to grow and develop in that league. Yeah, also, you hit the nail on the head. It's, it's all about development. I mean, the Fall League is, is awesome. It's being around so many good players. And I think some statistic was like almost like 60% of players in the Fall League end up making the major leagues, if yeah. not more. So, I mean, being around all those guys, picking their brain, it's huge for development. And if anyone ever gets the opportunity to, like, they'll come out and say, like, same exact thing that, like, it helps them take such a big step in your career because you see how other players handle themselves, other top prospects handle themselves and what they do day in and day out to get ready for games. And being able to take that and use it as your own routine is, I mean, it's instrumental. And, and it has helped me so much this, this past year and become a better relief, better reliever and a better baseball prospect in general. Yeah, that I mean that's awesome. And so was it in the Arizona Fall League? You, I know you hit 100 miles an hour for the first time. Well, was that in the Arizona Fall League? Was that during the regular season? It was the first time I ever hit it was uh, COVID and during training. Okay. And then the first time I hit it in a game was in that 2020 season in Double A. But yeah, I mean I, that's cool. I mean I'm trying to get back there and, and do it again. <laughs> I mean it's it, it's a it's a, it's it's a pretty cool feeling to be able to hit 100 and 
I uh, haven't done, didn't do it this year, but I hope we can get up to it next year. Yeah. And so you'd like sit mid, mid upper nineties. Mid to upper nineties is yeah. easier to where I'm at. Yeah. So then learning to, to, to command that is, 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 at the end of the day is probably more important than trying <laughs> to go a hundred, but I'm always yeah. going to go a hundred because it's fun. Yeah. You got to try it once in a while. To <laughs> exactly. See what happens, let it see go. If you still have it. Um, so now that you kind of go into this off season, you got to go to the upper minors this mm-hmm. year. And now you're kind of on that bridge to potentially making it to the big league soon. What are some of your, your main off season goals this year? And some of the goals you have going into the 2023 season. I mean, the biggest thing is, is, is get healthy and stay healthy. I had a yeah. few like, small nagging injuries towards the end of the year that I felt hindered my performance and, uh, didn't help me finish how I wanted to finish, but, um, get healthy, get, 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 get stronger, get a little more consistent, and just building that consistency, like at the end of the day, like, like everyone around you kind of has that, 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 that ceiling of being really, yeah. really good. If, if not, they wouldn't be in the upper minors. Kind of what I've, what I've noticed that separates the players is their floor, you know, like mm. what you're going to get day in and day out. So if you can kind of raise your floor to be closer to what your ceiling is, I mean, then you're going to be a lot more successful. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do is, is not really hit these crazy huge numbers, but bring my average numbers up. Yeah, just getting that consistency across exactly, the board. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. And then kind of just as you uh, th- think about the offseason too, um, what are some of the, the passions that you have outside of the game? Are there things that you go to during the offseason that during the yeah, regular yeah. season you don't have time for? But Definitely golf. Golf is the biggest yeah. one. I mean, I, golf in season is so tough. I mean, if you're a starter, it's pretty easy to kind of do it yeah. on the off days. But as a reliever, you kind of never know when you're going to have an off day. So I tend to avoid golf in season. So I'll go about once or twice a week and – Hit the links with the, with the boys and then play call. I play Call of Duty a bunch, so yeah, you know, I do that in season too. But we've been grinding the new Warzone the past few days. I was going to ask if you got the new yeah, one yeah. going. <laughs> so I mean, I haven't won yet, but we're getting there, getting getting used to it. But yeah, just kind of just hanging out with all my friends and and kind of just seeing everyone, uh, going golfing. Uh, but those are the two biggest things, definitely. Is there so you're in Arizona right now for the off I am, yeah, yeah. Is there a course that you're going to the most? Probably the Biltmore. Uh, it's, okay. I live about 10 minutes south of it now. Um, now, granted, we'll always, a few of the friends will always go to, go play like Rolling Hills and the municipal courses around here just to kind of like practice rounds because they're cheap and, you yeah. know, we're, we're not that great. So, at the end of the day, you don't want to spend $100 every time to go play like, <laughs> golf and suck. So. <laughs> Do you have improvements in the golf game happening, though? Any Oh, yeah, goals? I feel like I'm a little bit better. A few, few less slices. Um, yeah. But uh, we're still working at it. I used to aim to the left because I knew it was just going to hook right back. Exactly, on the door. the best. <laughs> There's that one time where it'll just go straight, but like the 15 other times, it's going to go right gotta back. Play this, gotta the play the slice. <laughs> I'll, I'll aim right towards the houses every time. Exactly. <laughs> um, so as you kind of have been on your path and your journey through baseball, um, who've been some of the big mentors for you as you kind of uh, made your way? I mean, at every level, it kind of seems like like there's a few guys like Arizona yeah. State was all the guys in the bullpen, mm. kind of like helped me transition to that bullpen role um, in the minor leagues is there are a few guys in double a who really, who are just older more established who really like kind of like took me under their wings. just like, Hey, this yeah. is what you do. This is what you not do. And it's not always on the field stuff. It's off the field stuff. It's handling yourself in between games just as much as it is getting ready for the game. So, you know, like a few of the big guys in double were Frank Rubio and Patrick with mm-hmm. Um, I mean, those two guys helped me so much and, and helped me grow so much. And then this last year at AAA, Mar- Joe Marciano, um, he helped me a bunch, kind of just, you know, how to handle myself in AAA because it is a different game every single level. Yeah. You up. But uh, those, I mean, those three guys have been huge, huge towards my career. I'm, you know, definitely grateful for them. Yeah. And I mean, it's got to be helpful to have those guys who have gone through that, especially when you think about the transition to the bullpen, because that's a big transition. If you're going from the starter and all of a sudden um, you're trying to find value in yourself and when you're making it to the bullpen to have guys who've gone through that experience, the same thing that you've gone through. I'm sure that's been huge. Kind of went went through your mindset when you did make that transition to the bullpen. I mean, it was definitely it was definitely rough at first. I didn't want to do it, especially (laughs) especially in college, because you hear that like, I mean, starters get the money in the draft, relievers are kind of. That, that second citizen almost when it comes to drafting purposes, just because it's so hard to predict how they're going to turn out at the next level. Um, so definitely at first I was, I was pretty irritated and pretty upset about it. Yeah. Uh, Cause I felt like I heard had earned the right to start, but you know, I sat down with uh, Jason Kelly, who was a pitching coach at the time. And he's like, look, like I know it sucks, but like, if you trust me, like this is what you're going to be in the future. Like nothing against you, but the way you pitch, the way you play, this is who you are. And yeah. the sooner we kind of transition to that, the quicker you're going to be successful at the next level. 
And again, after about after a few days of just like sitting on it, I was like, you know what? Like, let's do it. Like, what, what do yeah. I have to lose? Like, I'm just go out there and be the best best version of myself I can be. And it ended up, you know, being the right thing for me. And at the end of the day, like he was right. So I can I can't say anything about it. And it was a great, great, great call on his part. Yeah, got to love it. Fourth round, too, as a reliever. Exactly. That's yeah. huge. <laughs> exactly. Um, I've heard good things about Jason. He's the new UW head coach, he's at right? UW. Yeah. He was at LSU last year in UW now. So I'm excited to see what he does with that program. He's a great coach, great guy. I love him and uh, wish him nothing but success. And I think he's going to have it back up there at UW. That's awesome. Um, I already, uh, kind of the last two questions I wrap up with. One of them I sort of asked, like, favorite restaurant in Tempe, but do you have a go to restaurant overall that's like your go to restaurant? <sighs> probably if it's not june it's probably going to be jen which is another all you can eat place. <laughs> no this is a trend gotta get the sushi <laughs> love, love all you can, but jen is a korean barbecue place over in Tempe marketplace the okay place awesome that's but yeah awesome. those two play there and then probably del falco's which is an italian eatery up in uh, south scottsdale that place is that place is awesome too i love a good italian spot exactly Last question I always have um, is because we try to focus on helping future athletes and mm -hmm. things like that as well. Um, if you had one piece of advice for a guy who's kind of going through the same journey as you, whether it's going to JUCO or trying to adjust to the pros for the first time, what would be that one piece of advice you'd have for him? The biggest thing for me is, is bet on yourself. Like never, never think you're not good enough. And, and if you ever feel like if you about something, bet on yourself and do it. Like at the end of the day, as Love soon as it. you bet on yourself, you're gonna it's gonna it's gonna change something in your in your drive. You're gonna want it more, you're gonna do more, you're gonna train harder, you're gonna try harder. And even if at the end of the day you lose the bet, you're gonna be better off for it and you're gonna be in a better position in the future. And and I think that's the one thing that I did every step of the way of my career is I always bet on myself and and and, and took the chance, you know, going to JUCO instead of going to a safe route and playing mm -hmm. four years, going to Arizona State instead of instead of going to the draft, I always bet on myself and it always turned out for the best. Yeah. And I mean, I think you think about it, um, like it's just taking the shot on, like you said, taking the shot on yourself, but also like, there's all that outside noise. that's going to constantly tell you exactly. what, what route you should be taking or what you, but if you believe in yourself and the, like the route that you've taken. And then once you take that route, just focus on where your feet are and then boom. Exactly. Always be where your feet are and always keep grinding. For the, yeah. Keep, just keep working at it. Yeah. Well, RJ, I can't thank you enough for joining us. This was an awesome interview and we're wishing you not, nothing but the best going into 2023. Yeah, no, man. No, no problem. Thanks for having me and uh, have a good one.